about a little pray rain that goes with the evening tonight. having fun here get carried away could keep going ah that's a good sound more there's more <laughs> and there's more oh i love that great symbolism isn't it Good evening, everybody. Hope you've had a good week and a good weekend. Thank you for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to see Sarah. And uh, Sarah, Sarah has been on fire. Sarah is on her highest timeline, and it is so fun to be a part of it and uh, watch her rocking and rolling. This is Mary, Mary Ross. We're going to talk about her little trip coming up in a minute. If you guys want to spontaneous weekend next weekend and you're in that central u.s area we'll tell you about it hello jennifer good to see you i love that beautiful symmetric lots of sacred geometry going on in there wow that's beautiful beautiful Well, Brenda, good to have you back. I saw that you and I are going to be sitting with your chart here coming up, too. That's great. Appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. Good evening. That is, see if I can see who that is. That's Esmon. Hey, Esmon. Good to see you. You guys are awesome. Oh, Stacy. Wow. Looky there. From the lake. <laughs> Love that boat picture. You guys, um, her daughter, wasn't it, um, was it graduation? I mean, it's like, what happened there? I know you're going like that, but it was like, wow. And she just looked so incredibly beautiful, Stacy. Oh, my gosh. I saw that picture, what, a month ago or so? I may be off. Anyway, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was just beautiful, and I loved it. Melissa, yes, the Equinox yesterday. Melissa, I hope you guys are feeling better. I understand they had a little COVID bout this week. And uh, some other stuff, some displacements and just moving things around and hope you guys are doing well. That's kind of one of the things that I wanted to just check in with you guys is, okay, sure enough, real, honest to goodness, how has this week been? for you. Um, and we're going to talk about that. And as I said on the video on Facebook, now those of you on YouTube didn't probably see the Facebook post, but we're going to do a little exercise, not a little exercise. We're going to do the big exercise from parallel universes of self. So we're going to go reality jumping tonight. We are. That's what we're going to do. In fact, I'm going to get into it pretty quickly. We'll give it a little bit more time here for whoever comes in um, a bit later here. But we, that's what we're going to do. We're going to 
uh, jump timelines and envision some things that we want. Busy week? Yeah, me too. Very much. Very much. Deep soul journey. Well, that fits the astrology in the sky. You are so welcome, Stacy. Oh, wow. Sarah is just, I mean, I'll tell you who else is on fire. I'll tell you who else is just on fire. I didn't realize. I, mean, I had a conversation with her this week. Stevie McGuire, who does the hypnosis, the past life regression and hypnosis. I didn't get the whole story because we had just a few minutes. But she, um, they moved off grid in something that came to them. That was something that has been really uh, coming to me strong these last couple of weeks. So I've been spending some time, you know, in the my downtime is doing stuff like that, looking at land and looking at RV uh, barns, this kind of thing. And I'm like, you know, for not a lot of money, I mean, a lot, really, literally, not a lot of money. And I'm just like, wouldn't it be nice to own? So I've, I've been in this rental mode for a long time intentionally because I wanted to be able to move around. So this is all intentional, but I was like, wouldn't it be nice to just have something to lock onto and not have a payment? Right. So there's a way to do it. And I mean, it's like, wow, I've been amazed. And it just kind of came together. So that's something that's been on my mind too. But they, they moved off grid up in Washington state. Washington State. I was going to say Oregon, but I think they are in Washington. Of course, Lizzie is in Oregon. I've talked to some other people this week on readings that are in Oregon. So uh, I think Stevie's in Washington State, but um, I think she's in here too. I don't know. Um, that girl is on fire. And this is one of the reasons that I, she actually pointed out something that's one of the reasons that I wanted to, as I was thinking about how why would I do this? You know, why would I try to find some land, some re more remote land, even more remote? And uh, why would I be interested in doing that? And the way that I'm thinking about this little design, if, if I could do it in a place where I could be outdoors quite a bit, it, uh, it would be for the soul. It would totally be for the nourishment of the soul. And it would be amazing. And that's what she's doing. And she's detached and unplugged from all the stuff. And they have it's intentional when they go to town. And I mean, she is on fire. She is lit up. But we all need a session. But uh, yeah, I would connect with her. So um, yeah. Um, we're going to hit that very point, Melissa. <laughs> We're going to hit that very point because it has been in the air. Oh, I'm checking you guys. Let me see if I can just peek in still here. Um, yeah, I can't see that. Okay, so I'm just going to stay with it here. This was Mary. Two, two of her patients passed. She works in and wife, and uh, that's a mandatory job where you have to recharge. <laughs> Any of us that work in this area, we have to take our time and we have to rejuvenate ourselves because if we go back in tired, then it really comes across, right? I mean, it, it's a, uh, and that's, that's, um, my little thing is, you know, as much forward progress, there has to be internal progress. So there's that balance, right? You have to have both. So, Mary, I wish that for you this week. So um, glad you guys are all here. Thank you so much. Happy Equinox weekend. We're going to talk about that a little bit on astrology, not tomorrow, but down the road. So, um. Let's do a card for tonight. Now, this is this is crazy. Okay, this is crazy. But what I did is uh, I hadn't used this deck for a while. This is the Lightseer's deck. And 
I have a routine that I've done since that first deck I picked up in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and and threw the same card, the Solar Plexus card, which talked about expressing your power, which I had stuffed in a sack for decades, four times in a row. One time, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is not, oh, and I mean, the card touched me the first time. Oh, express your power. I mean, that was, it was actually emotional that first time. Shuffled the deck, drew another card, Solar Plexus. <laughs> time shuffled the deck like a scorpio would right passionately intensely through the cards solar i'm like no way this is happening again i mean i shuffled that thing until the cards were probably ragged four times <laughs> solar plexus i got the message well tonight's message for us is the nine of cups from this deck the light seers deck the universe is gifting you your desire. So when we do our meditation tonight, you need to be intentional. Seriously. The universe is gifting you your desire. Choosing joy, manifested dreams, gratitude, abundance. Shadow side, delayed gratification, unfulfilled desires, unmanifested dreams, greed blocking the path, not appreciating simple things in life smartness. Wow. This is a card of abundance and happiness and is often fittingly called the wish card. <laughs> or we'll call it tonight pure technique card. We're going to jump realities right here. Pick one of those realities that's a ball in the air. Let's move this over a little bit. Allow yourself to experience how Filling the journey can be. Oh my gosh. And fill your life with all the laughter and bliss needed to spur you into the next phase of your happiness. Take stock of all it feels. Uh, sorry, increase the noise. Take stock of all the feels that are surfacing, what you're feeling. And remember to practice gratitude for the manifestation of your dreams. The appearance of this card in your personal spread is an auspicious message of prosperity, harmony, getting what you desire. What you have been working toward is coming to you. So enjoy life's pleasures and sink into the awe and wonder of a joyous heart. A little statement, I open my grateful heart to the gifts that are coming my way. So those of you that have been feeling some angst this week, there you go. Now, let me tell you how that card was picked. Did I go through the card or did I go through the book and say, oh, this would be a nice deck? No. Oh, I hadn't been to this deck for a while. So I have my little routine that I've done since Eureka that I shuffle the deck three times and then I cut it three different ways. So I did that. And then I went over here because I don't have a tabletop surface long enough to get this whole deck spread out. So I do it on the here, bare carpet. And I uh, spread everything out, and I set a little protection there so that only love and malef uh, benefic beings, no malefic entities, no malefic critters allowed, only that which was standing for love. And for all of us tonight, that I have a way that I put my hands over the deck. That's the way I've done it ever since those four in a row. I figured it worked good. It still works today. And that's how this card came. That was the card specifically protected us intentionally. So there you go. And then I, because I hadn't been in there for a while, I picked three more for myself and they were all good. They were all very good. So I thought, if, you know, if that's an encouragement for us that, um, that we need because what we're hearing out there is about the opposite of that, right? Things are going bad, you know, falling apart. It's going to get tough. We're just a job, you know, we're just all the blah, 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 blah. And every I mean, I did that for the future, for, for myself and for us. And every card, cards, every one of them was good. So 
how can we not stand in that? And if we're going to be conscious creators, then one of the exercises that we can do tonight is short-term future. Now, um, we had a, a day on the calendar yesterday that there's been a lot of chatter that yesterday was going to be a significant day. Well, we're all still here. <laughs> this is real. This is not a mirage. It's not a recording. This is real. And uh, we're all still here. So uh, I have seen that come and go in my 63 birthdays. And we saw it at the year 2000. The world was going to come to a screeching standstill. We saw it in 2012. My calendar was supposed to break everything. My mom, as I've told stories on the podcast, moved to be so absolutely certain, positively certain, that the rapture was coming in September. We're in the second of the new Jewish feast holidays. Tomorrow is Yom Kippur. And I'm just absolutely sure that it would be Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur. And we're still here. You know? So uh, these dates, I think, whenever the collective gets on a date like this, it's time to look the other way. But on any, any day, we should be creating because we are such powerful, intentional manifestors. And sometimes we get off our game. I get it. I do too. So tonight is what we're going to pick. The theme is that we're going to find a reality that already exists in parallel infinity. And we're going to move from this reality reality first in our minds and then you're going to hold that vision in the days and weeks and months to come and you can start dancing as though you were in that reality and we'll see how many of you have stories after this uh, that um, are, that you've changed you've shifted the reality and I know it's mind-bending stuff, but all of this comes from Fred's book, Parallel Universes of Self, which in its just purest elementary form says that in a world, in a universe of infinite, infinite, infinite everything, so infinite timelines, that means there is no past, there is no future infinite realities, infinite gal galaxies, universes, multiverses, infinite God, infinite source, infinite creations. Think of infinite. What does that mean? Infinite means every single possibility that could possibly be <laughs> about you. And your soul is somewhere in one of those infinite realities. So this is where Fred says, the version of you that became a movie star, the version of you that married your childhood sweetheart, married the version of you that stayed married to your childhood sweetheart, the version of you who got divorced and been married for one time for your whole life. It's like all the pause of everything are there if we want to play with it, if we want to tap it. Now, the way that I've done this is that I think that there are two best ways to approach this. One is through something that is close enough to you that it can bring it on in. So I will be 64 years old next month. 
the chances of me Mars on one of Elon Musk's rocket ships is, <laughs> is there that possibility? Sure. In an infinite reality, we have to acknowledge that it is out there somewhere. Uh, is that something I even want to do? No. <laughs> no interest. So we have to pick something that is within reach. And one of the things that I really love about this is, is when you identify something that is trying to manifest for you, it's trying to come up. Those are the ones that you can lock into and try to bring in closer. I think that the best story, the best practical story of this, like how, okay, so wait a minute, how does this work? Are you saying you're sitting up there in North Carolina in a cave? Are you saying that you can envision being in a, a penthouse in Manhattan and you could switch into that reality? Like what happens to this reality? What happens to all your stuff? What about the audio books? What about our front Sunday night? If you switch off into this reality, which who's seeing that reality, right? It's like it is mind bending. But the story that uh, Annie told in one of the podcasts, this came out right after the Orlando Fred Dodson seminar in 2022. The uh, Orlando, uh, that was reality creation, wasn't it? I believe. And um, there were some great stories. You know, this was right after COVID. Everybody was back together. So it was so wonderful to be back together finally in a real person meeting. And people were just sharing. They were sharing their lives, and sharing what was going on. And this young lady from Houston told a very touching story, and we captured it. It's on that podcast that was released in March, April of 2020. It's uh, two stories from there. And Seva also told her story of her upbringing and how she shifted her life from a very, wow, I mean, at 17, that girl had lived a lot more than most of us have. It. And she told the story of how she shifted her life. Well, Addie's story was that she said that her marriage was just not what she had expected be after these years. They weren't where she had hoped they would. They had two young kids. And she was even thinking about whether, you know, continuance. But she was listening to parallel universes of self while driving to work. And she worked in Houston. So that means she had some time to listen. And she decided that she would envision exactly what we're going to do tonight different reality in their home. So being being loved the way she wanted to be loved and being able to love the way that she wanted to be free to love in return. The, the, just the help, the towards the typical things that a couple would share with two young kids, mutual uh, sharing of the burden, mutual respect, mutual love. And she said that in the time that they had been married, that both of them had uh, put on a few pounds that they would like to, she would like to see, you know, in her mind, she would like to have them off. So that was what she envisioned as she was driving in Houston traffic. So see, you don't have to be at Mount Shasta to pull this off. You can do it everywhere. Houston traffic. <laughs> it's like anywhere. So she started doing that. She started envisioning. And she saw it. She saw herself in that role. And she saw herself as that person. And she saw her marriage as that marriage. And she said, you know, the first thing that her husband said to her was, wow, honey, I don't know what you've been doing, but you've lost weight. She hadn't done a thing. And then he started just helping with the dishes and helping clean up the kitchen and helping clean up the house and helping do this. Without being asked or anything, she 
never told him what she had envisioned. And then she said in after the weeks and a couple of months went by, she realized that things had just naturally poured without her doing anything into that relationship, that marriage that she wanted. And things were better for the kids, things were better at home, things were more fulfilled, and they both, without having to do anything, no gym memberships or anything, significantly. It's like, wow, there is parallel universes itself. So we captured it. It's how it works. So um, let's do is scroll. Oh, a couple of things here before. Sarah has the journal still on sale. So if you'd like to pick up a journal, those are available. Sorry about that. Just this one. Um, the journals are still on sale for the next day or two. And then next week, ba -ba -ba boom, mugs are going to be on sale. So hold on. Sorry, guys. Is that better? Hopefully that's better. Sorry. I was trying to use this other mic. I've got to keep looking for the best setup here for this. All right. Hopefully is that better. Audio going in and out. Well, let me know how we're doing now. It's better? Okay. All right. Hopefully this will this should be great. This is a good, uh, okay. All right, good. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right, I'll be mindful of where it is. Um, uh, I hope some of that came across, talking about parallel universes. We'll, we'll do it again. We'll recreate it. Sorry, guys. Don't know how much that fell off. So mugs are on sale this week. Journals are still priced a couple of dollars off. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is Mary Ross is still going to go on her trip to Hocking Hills, Ohio. And um, I, I'm not sure that anybody is, has come up. I'm really excited about this idea. And I think we should all try to think about pursuing this next year in our different geographic areas. But what she was trying to do is just get a group of listeners together from the what central southern Great Lakes area there, and uh, have a weekend. Well, it you know things are, are happening right now and stuff and whatnot. But she booked a cabin, and she is going to go on because as you just saw her post from before, she needs to do that. <laughs> she needs some downtime. So if you're in that area and you have some time this coming weekend and you want to go hang out with Mary and give her a hug. And you guys can just connect on highest timeline kind of connection, then that is going to happen. There is her email address. Take a screenshot of it or catch it on the replay, and uh, you can do that. All right. All right. Good deal. Thank you, Mary. And whether you're with some folks from our podcast or there by yourself, rejuvenating by yourself, I wish you a very restful. Okay, let's talk about this pure technique. So one of the things that Fred said in chapter five, in setting up chapter five, is this is the only technique you need to practice if you want to do what Addie did and jump timelines. Bring another reality into this reality. Blend timelines. And I'm going to also re-mention something that I think is a great addition to this. And that is what um, Burt Goldman, God rest his soul, he passed during COVID at 90-something. <laughs> but he lived a very long, fruitful, productive, wonderful life and left behind a big message of the same thing, what he called quantum jumping that basically you find yourself in a reality that you want to take on. So one of the things that Bert learned 
late in life, probably in his at least late 70s, if not 80s, was painting. And he became quite a painter. Another thing he learned is playing the piano. And he became quite a good piano player. I mean, he could sit down and entertain you. And this was somebody who had no background in this whatsoever because he connected with the Burt Goldman who could play the piano. That simple. And he interacted with that person and in essence became that person and he could play the piano and he could paint and he even sold his paintings and made money at 90. <laughs> so, so you can do this. It really is a, just an amazing, once you master this, I think we don't you think of it enough and we don't use it enough. We don't think of it being possible. So here is the first thing. And I, I think as we settle into this, let's do a couple of things first to prepare. Something that I've been doing now since these um, last couple of months, I guess, is just clearing the space and making sure that we are here with only the support from our highest timelines. Like no critters welcome. I had, I think, goodness sakes, I'm, you know, doing these readings and uh, several stories of critter stories of people who have just know that they've been entities and like they're showing up everywhere. So we have to clear the space. That's the best way to approach this. So let's just together for a second Take a good exhale. We'll settle into this meditation. We're going to shift our realities. But only that which is supporting my highest timeline and your highest timeline and the connection of our timelines together here now is allowed. Anything else must flee in the name of the Most High. Out gone. Exit. Scram. So only that which is of love remains. And so it is. And we are guided by our source. That's what we're connecting to. Infinite source. Now, what you do is you define a reality that you would like to experience. So the piano player version of you the um, the version of you that has a hundred thousand more dollars in your account if that's what you want the version of you that whatever whatever it is whatever reality you would like to bring in just think of one make it realistic make it fairly close And you can even think about, like, what would the doppelganger of me, that's your alter ego out there in infinity land, somebody else in another reality that is you, what would that person look like? What would they be doing? I mentioned Bert's technique. Think about, just going to be quiet here for a second capture something. If you have a notepad or a pen or something, you might want to write it down just, just to focus your attention on. What would it be? I have mine. Do you have yours? All right. Now, second point in this exercise is to relax to a zero point. 
the zero point is that of a neutral observer. And boy, this is uh, probably one of the most difficult parts of doing this. So what you're going to do is look at that reality that you would like to bring into your life as an observer. You could look at it like you're in the stands and it's a game, ball game, or whatever that you're watching. Or you could do it as though you're a journalist reporting on it. Late breaking news, Sarah Wakeman just brought in $10,000. She has money as her, some of her manifesting. Then you give the details of how she did it, but it's you. You're observing you. This is my favorite Fred Dodson exercise. I use it so much. I think we're going to talk about desire and resistance. So think of a horizontal line in front of you. And, in, and think of a midpoint. This is so easy. And over here, put desire. And over here, put resistance. And let's just say this is zero, the middle, and this is 10, desire, 10, resistance, okay? What happens is we get attached to outcomes. So we desire something to a level 10 or 12 <laughs> or 20 or 5 in the middle, right, over here. So even now, think of this thing that you created that you would like to bring in and put your desire for that thing on a, on a numeric value between one and ten, you know, zero and ten. Okay? Now, what happens in the energetic world when you desire something to a high level? What happens? What do you think? From an energetic perspective, you might as well put wings on it, send it off like a bird, fly away. It's going to run from you. It's going to go. It's going to leave. So that's desire. When you desire too much, you push it away. You've seen this happen. It happens a lot with relationships. All right. What about resistance? Same thing. Zero to 10. What are you resisting? And maybe what you're trying to create is coming out of resisting something over here. That happens a lot too. So same thing, zero to about 10. What's your level of resistance? My biggest was, you know, the traffic and the heat when I was living those years in Dallas. And I was a 100. <laughs> My arm's not long enough. I really resisted. And when I finally grasped this exercise, came to a point in 2015 that I just said, okay, this is it. I'm going to stay here. I will travel when I can. I will make it work. I will find alternative places that I can go. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to, this will be my home. And within six months, totally unorchestrated, totally unexpected. I was in Aspen, Colorado, in a home, paying $700 a month. I mean, that's, they spray $700 into the air at cloud nine all the time. <laughs> Shake it up. So miracles can happen when we let go. So what happens when we resist something, obviously, energetically, we bring it right toward us. The very thing we don't want. It's a paradox. So you don't want to be zero 
because that means you have no emotions. And that's not how, you know, obviously we feel. But what you want is to be able to release enough that you are either like at a two here or a two here. Two desire, two resistance, not driven by either. And you're a neutral observer of the situation. That's what he's talking about here. So you're seeing the reality from the perspective of an observer. Then, step three, look at the new version of yourself from the outside. So this goes back to kind of what Bert Goldman taught, that you observe you. So in other words, his example, he would have observed himself playing the piano. He's not playing the piano. He's observing himself. He's observing a version of himself playing the piano. What Addie would have been doing is she would have been seeing their family, their home from outside the home, like through a window where there was love and mutual support and encouragement and the bliss that she wanted in that relationship. So take a minute now from that point of it being neutral, like you really just are not holding on to anything. As one who is outside of the reality, I'm going to be quiet. See yourself in the new version of yourself. See yourself in the new reality. One of the questions is, can you really see yourself in that reality? Or is it too much of a desire? Can you really see it? How does it feel? You like it? Allow yourself to like it without be being attached to it. That's the key here. All right, now take it to the next level. Now enter the viewpoint. So now you are sitting at the piano playing. Now you are painting. Now you are cashing checks. Now, as Addie did, she is in the reality so that when she walks through the door, she experiences the new way that she wants her relationship to be, but it isn't yet. So you're acting. A lot of Fred's manifesting books, he talked about acting in fact, he did some acting so that he could practice this very thing. Acting is a good way to engage this part of the step, part of the process. The other part of this is to, like... 
I was thinking about, for some reason, oh, I know why. When Jimmy Buffett died, Jimmy Buffett had a presence in Aspen. And Jimmy Buffett and Glenn Fry from the Eagles were good friends, and they had homes that were right next to each other. And I, I went and found where those homes were, and I like that kind of stuff. And so I was thinking about, wow, I pictured Jimmy Buffett's home in my mind. And Glenn Fry's home was right behind his, and then Jimmy Buffett sold his home to Glenn Fry, and Glenn Fry put a recording studio in there, and that recording studio is still there. But I was just thinking, wow, what would it be like to see the world as Jimmy Buffett? That's what you're doing here. You're seeing the world as the person you would like to create. What would be different? What would be different if you had the reality already in hand and how would you act differently? How would you be differently? How would you walk? How would you think? Now, let's do the last one, and I'm going to suggest that this one may be the most difficult. Now, you live as though that reality was there. So for our examples, Bert went to the art store and started buying paints and canvases because that's what artists do. He got a book and started learning how to play piano and probably took some lessons. But that's what piano players do. And even if he sat with chopsticks, I would imagine he sat with chopsticks because piano players play the piano. And he started putting paint on canvas. If your reality involves more money, for example, in your current life, but just with more money, you could do something like Sarah told me she had done. She took the screenshot of her bank account from her phone and erased the actual, the current number, and she wrote in the number that she wanted it to be. And that's her, whenever she turns her phone on, that's what she sees. <laughs> that's living in the new reality. But what you don't do here in this step is think about how that's not fulfilled. You have to really literally live as though you were in that new reality.
And the thing about this step too, and this is why I argue that this is the hardest step of the five, is because you don't position yourself as creating the reality. The reality is already there. And in Addie's story, she made that very clear that she lived as though the reality was fulfilled. And as if there was no other option. So now let's do this together, because when we blend our energies together here on Sunday nights, it is such a magical thing, and it is so powerful that as you have created your reality and a number of other people have created theirs, let's all come together now energetically to support each other in the fulfillment of your reality of the other's realities i know we never go wrong going to the beach <laughs> it seems to always work so let's picture ourselves together in a beach scene our soul family those who are of like mind and who do support each other. And like Mary tonight, when she put her comments out about being a little depleted from the week, she got a lot of support right back. And that's what we do. It's our safe harbor of social media where we can come in there and not worry about the drag and the pull of everything that's on the outside. Kind of like Stevie in her little off-grid cabin up in the woods on fire. Because when you release all that other stuff, you get a better perspective, don't you? So let's all come together on the beach. We've all done this work individually. And now we're walking up to the edge of the water, toes in the sand, no shoes allowed. <laughs> and feel that sand in between your toes and feel the grit on your feet. And it's warm. Your body is warm. And we embrace, we hug. There's lots of hugs. Maybe even a tear or two. But we're so glad to be together. Just picture that scene. You've seen names come across the screens, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, or you see it from here. Think of those names and those people who have been your energetic support. Now, goodness sakes, we just crossed over two years of doing this. I forgot about that. Last month, two years. I didn't think we'd make six weeks. That was some faith, wasn't it? <laughs> but we've all done this work now, and we come together, and we're going to support each other in the fulfillment of each other's pure technique vision reality and that's just what this is about it's about standing for somebody else how do you do that it's 
it's really easy. I learned this technique from the landmark folks. Because once you went through a couple of their classes, you could work on the crew that put on the classes back then. I guess they've done away with all that now. But they would have you in the back of the room or position somewhere and you would be holding space for the participants. And that just means that you stand there with an intention. That the, and that the meeting is successful, that the people get what they're supposed to do, that the person leading the meeting is effective in their communication. You just stand with intentions. And I did that in these seminars that I've done with Fred. I just stand and hold the room for him. So we're going to do that now with each other. So the names that you've seen come through the screen and then others who you might just know from the Facebook group stand for their reality fulfilling. There's another energetic principle. When two people stand for something or more, it's a lot more powerful in the energy world. So now we're standing for each other and you're standing for mine as I am standing for yours. May they be so. So give your energy to that common fulfillment of our wishes fulfilled. And the best skids that we could grease this with is love. So send each other love now, because we need it. For some of us, it's been a tough week. So just send love. I am loving awareness. And even say, as a name comes to your mind, I love you. Send them that kind of love. I love you. I'm glad you're in my life, even if it's here and not in person. At least it's here. I love you. I'm glad you're here tonight. And the people that come to your mind will be the people who are meant to receive your love tonight. I love what somebody just put in our Facebook group. Hope you guys can still hear okay. I'm trying to mind this. Standing for visions becoming reality for all of us this week. Boom. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that is perfectly it. Thank you so much. Wow. That is great. That is so great. This is such a wonderful exercise. And we really can shift into other realities by doing this. So I hope that this was <laughs> light it up, right? Light it up. I hope that this was beneficial for you and something that you can carry through the week. And one of the things I was thinking is, as we are experiencing this heightened level of, um, of um, angst, in the collective that is very high in the news and it's very high on social media. So it's like, if you log on here to one of these platforms at all, you're seeing it, you can't avoid it. That um, by setting these, by, by 
using this process and this technique, and this may or may not be what you did tonight, but it's something you can certainly do from here because you're not just allowed one of these. <laughs> it's infinite, infinite. But one of the things that we can do is create how we're going to experience whatever is in front of us, if anything. And we don't know that anything unusual or sub, I mean, it just, you know, the world's been crazy for the last three years. I don't know that, you know, that there's any different level of crazy in front of us. There certainly could be. The warning signs are certainly there. We know that. But are we going to experience it that way? Um, Evangeline Adams. Here's one for those of you wanting to do um, spiritual work, soul work. You want to bring up a soul practice. I've been hearing this a lot in the readings that I've been doing. And it was there in 2000 when I was doing this, 2021, 2021. And... Um, People would say there's just this, there's definite collect, there's like in our, in our group, anybody who would be on here tonight says, you know, they might say, I have a good job. I like what I do. I like my coworkers. I, I feel important in my company, but it just feels like there's something more that I'm supposed to be doing. Like, it's just, I don't know, you know, it's not fulfilling. And yes, I've got to put bread on the table. And I, or Steve Forrest said in the interview that came out today, I've got to keep the wolves from the door. But there's more, you know, there's just something else that I should be doing. And I'm thinking of this lady who was an astrologer, prominent astrologer. Her name was Evangeline Adams. And she really started to come up in popularity in the 19-teens. And then in the 1920s, she was very popular. She hit her peak, and then she died in 1932, which was during the Depression. But her business basically rode that tide up to and into the Depression. But, you know, she was on the radio in the 1920s, doing astrology. Her office was in Carnegie Hall in Manhattan, and she charged the equivalent of $2,000 at the peak today, in today's money, $2,000 for a 30-minute astrology reading. So how do you experience this? And those were in the years leading up to the Great Depression and into the Great Depression. And she said in her autobiography, this is all from her. This isn't hearsay. This is her autobiography. And she said that once the depression hit, people were even more interested because they wanted to know what was going on. So how are we going to experience whatever it is that might be in front of us? How have we experienced the last three years? I mean, we're all still here. <laughs> that theme of tonight we're all I'm, hey, I'm still here but we've all made it and we made it quite brilliantly really so we've done our best um we've upped our game I think wouldn't you say that you are on a higher timeline tonight than you were three years ago five years ago sure I would so and we, you know, and we get together here, this little group that supports highest timeline stuff on Sunday nights, and we support each other. So it's like, and, and then during the week, there are a lot of people you can contact and call on. So we have this just amazing tribe that um, are all looking to accomplish the same things. So it's almost like, goodness, if we would get on this and really support each other, um, you know, we, we should be able to create however we're going to experience the future. So um, I think that's the thing that we um, keep in mind here as we're um, in those uncertain days, you know, when it looks a little hairy and a little foggy. Come back to this, come back to this, use that technique and stand in that step number five. You've got to stay in the reality that you created. And um, 
um, fulfill that. So the eclipses are coming. The eclipses are coming. Yes, we are going to be talking about it. We are going to be talking about it. So we'll pick that apart on fun astrology. Great to see some new faces. Look here. Angel, good to see you. Good to see you. What a good looking couple there. Oh, where is where is oh hang on. Heather. I saw Heather was down there and then Heather's not there. I don't know what happened. Oh. There we go. There. Hello. <laughs> I was trying to catch up with you. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Good to have you from Central California. Welcome. Welcome. Glad you're here. Glad you made it. Thank you for coming on. Um, let's see here. Yes. Happy anniversary. Thanks, Melissa. And Melissa, thank you so much for all your support for everything. My goodness. You know, Melissa is just so authentic and real and lives her life and loves life and is going up and down and just, you know, and it's like um, she is out there and she doesn't mind putting it out and she doesn't mind asking for love and support and help and she doesn't mind giving it either. So thank you so much, Melissa. I just really, really appreciate you and your friendship and your support. And yeah, I mean, Melissa has been, she was one of the ones two years ago that was like, oh, this is good. Let's keep doing this. And was like, okay. So, <laughs> Melissa, it is like watching your own movie. And that's the thing that Fred was talking about is that you are an actor or an actress in your own show. Liz, glad to see you. Hope the kids are doing okay and that they got back safely and that they had a great time as that hurricane just moved on to the north and didn't bother them at all. Hopefully that was the case. Um, ah, Somebody jumped on and Pure was on the screen. Oh, that's just great. Oh, look at this. Synchronicity. Was listening to that part of Levels of Energy this morning. That's great. That is great. All right, good. Okay, you guys. Let's see here. Yeah, good to have you here. Oh, let's see here. I want to catch up with some of these. are some good comments. In my reading Saturday, she said, my higher self and guides are telling me to do certain things, and my ego is saying, why me? And your soul team is saying, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> oh, boy. Maybe we need a maybe we need a uh, coffee mug for why not, you know, right? We could do that. Level up's good, though, right? Hey, some California folks. Perfect. Great. Love it. You guys are awesome. we got a lot of folks from California. A lot of folks. Tom, trying to step into a reality of free of back pain. Wow. Sorry. Boy, the healing, you know, healing and, re and, and that pure technique is an interesting combination. Yes. Yes because you're morphing your reality. So whatever it takes for that back pain to resolve, right? I mean, that's theoretically, you're, you're blending in with that. So for sure. Oh, better days ahead. Absolutely. All right, good. Well, you guys have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for being here. I just appreciate you so much. I love you, truly do. I love blending that energy. And I hope that this um, just walk through some old familiar stuff of the parallel universes of self, pure technique of jumping realities that we can do it. It is very powerful. Burt Goldman, you know, just like Fred. I mean, there's two examples of doing exactly the same thing. So it is possible, and I hope that you'll put that as a priority practice for this coming week. Thank you so much for being here. Love you to pieces. Have a great one. I'll see you on about, what, eight or ten podcasts this week. So <laughs> we will be together, all right? Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful week. See you soon.